The Switch turned two years old this week and in celebration, we want to reminisce about our favorite eShop games, the games from the eShop that we have played and enjoyed the most on Switch. This is a platform that has a plethora of excellent titles, games that are ported from recent times, games that are ported from previous generations, games that are all around excellent, and some games that are all around massive. But this list specifically is just the ones we love. It was hard to pick them, Zach, because there's a lot of stuff on Switch that we know we love, but we had already just played on other platforms. We didn't get to experience it on Switch so much, and I guess that says something about the platform itself. But with that said, I'm happy with the 10 games here. I think all 10 of these games are a really good time. I'm just happy with the eShop in general. I know that there are a ton of games there, and the excess can be a problem for some people. But in combing through the catalog, I really like a lot on the eShop, and it could be organized better, yeah. Maybe there could be more tentpole programming, and it feels like year one for us was stronger maybe than year two. We've got three games from year two and seven from year one on our, our top ten. But I really am happy with how things have gone, and so are developers. We've seen in recent days lots of articles highlighting how good this platform has been to smaller game dev studios. Yeah, that goes without saying. I have seen developers, and many people have seen developers say like, hey, like we sell way more on Switch than we do on any other platform, and that needs to be applauded. It's become a really good platform, honestly. Yeah, I, I really, I, I just enjoy it. I like it a lot. I, I obviously dream of themes. I dream of a, a better hierarchy to highlight the prioritized titles, but I love it and I love these 10. So let us know in the comments down below your favorite eShop games of the first two years. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. And without further ado, this list is in alphabetical order. Ranking these would be nigh impossible because it's all about feel and love, Gabe. And that is something that is hard to qualify. How do you feel about the first game on our list being something that I love, Zach? Ape Out, it's the most recent addition to the list. That's kind of cool. Yeah, this game literally came out a little bit ago. It just squeezed under the year two banner, and it's the most recent title on our list, one of the most recent titles on the platform, and it is darn good. Yeah, I always thought that like visually it was like super striking and I, I forgot like what artist it was But there's like these like old school movie posters for some like Hitchcock movies that this reminded me of and I fell in love with it right away Just visually and then on top of that the music is like really cool And it's like procedurally generated where every anytime you like defeat an enemy or kill an enemy it like has a percussion or a like synthesizer like kick in it's like super awesome the way that works the soundtrack is something i actually like listen to a little bit just like we're not even playing the game when just like wow. editing and stuff so fun little fact there and uh you mentioned it and you described it in the perfect way possible this is like donkey kong if donkey kong was made by someone that was a nintendo <laughs> right or if he got frustrated that retro isn't making another new game and he busted loose and he went a little bit crazy. We don't want to spend too much time describing these games, more just the feeling that they, they gave us as we played. And this one really was a warm, fuzzy feeling. It made me feel like I was on vacation. And it really reminded me of the Whoa. early days of Switch when there were just these unique titles that maybe weren't massive in scope, maybe didn't have a huge team or a lot of notoriety behind them. But it's just a game made by a Gabe. L literally, it's, it's made by a guy named Gabe. And it has a charm and it has a polish that I, I don't know, I just, I really associate it with the early days of Switch, and it's fun, it's challenging, it doesn't try to do too much or bite off more than it can chew, it just lets you go ape out for a little bit, and it's a really recommendable experience. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Let's go to Astro Bears Party, a game that I love. It may not, again, be an award winner, but it has won our hearts at Switch 4s. It is always on the cheap, it's probably the best cheap game that the Switch has, and it's freaking phenomenal. It's such a silly and, and at times stupid concept of these bears. I don't know, is it spaghetti? Is it is it thread? Is it just imaginary lasers? What are they spreading around these planetoids? I don't know, but it's some of the most multiplayer fun I've had on the system. Can I call you out on being a fake Astro Bears fan? Because the name of the game isn't even Astro Bears Party anymore, remember? Like they're changing well, it. Not yet, dude. It hasn't happened yet. Yeah, it's about they're, to they're happen. About to, they're about to upgrade to just straight on Astro Bears or downgrade. I guess it depends on how much you enjoyed the party. Uh, but it's going to see a price hike 
it's also going to see a lot of new content, which I'm very excited for. As long as you have a sensibility for lighthearted fun, you got to give Astro Bears a try. The, the, the gameplay is sound, the style is questionable, but the fun is undeniable. Gable, let's move through the letters. We're out of the A's, got no B's. We do have a C, though, and that's Celeste. The best game on Switch. That's the B right there. <laughs> Debatable D. <laughs> we got our own Sesame Street show <laughs> kicking off here with, with uh, the the letters of the day that equate to different uh, facts about the Switch. No, it, whether it's factually the best game or not, it's absolutely incredible. I love it a lot, uh, and it deserves every top spot, every second spot. It, it's just it's amazing, and it made both of us feel wonderful. Well, wonderful might not be how I describe how I felt when playing it, though. There was, like, points where I wanted to cry. The, the, okay. the game made me think about myself a lot. And, you know, I've said this before, right? But the, the themes of, like, self-acceptance and, you know, some mm -hmm. mild depression. And I don't know how mild it is in Celeste, but just being <laughs> unsure of yourself and things like that. It, that game touched me. Like, and for a, a platformer to, like, touch me like that, it was the most unexpected thing ever on Switch. And that's why I, I, I say it's the best game of Switch. It's not the best, me. I mean, Smash, there's a lot of great stuff on there. Let's, let's say this. It is the best eShop game. Yeah, it is It is my favorite game on Switch. Even, it's our favorite yeah. eShop game. Yeah, sure. If we had to crown a king or a queen of the eShop, it would be Celeste. You know what the game's about. I can't wait for the new content. It's just... It's magical. It's perfect in nearly every way and how many games can you say that about hardly any let's go to one game that i was super excited for coming to switch and i played more on switch than anywhere else that's enter the gungeon i think it is my favorite roguelike on the switch i know that's a genre that you're not super into gabriel but this one is so good bullets as enemies was a brilliant idea crazy guns was a brilliant idea Putting it all together with polish and fun and replayability and difficulty makes this one of a kind. This game really stresses me out. <laughs> it's, it's, Why? It's, it's so frantic. Like there's just like constant like aggression towards you. Like it, there's never like a time of reprieve like at all. Yeah, there, there's some rooms where you can just chill and shop and, and take it easy. Yeah, I know. But when you're actually like playing like... It's just like, be on your toes, man. yeah, you're being bombarded with, with again, constant aggression. I, I mean, I, I think it's a really fun game. I approve of it. I love it. And it definitely belongs on the list. But uh, yeah, man, it's a stressful game for me. Price wise, it works wonderfully. Stylistically, I think it's super charming. Gameplay, very polished. Uh, there are some other games in the genre that get more play on the, the radio waves. But I would put uh, all my marbles behind this guy. Next, we have my second favorite game in this genre on the platform, and this one definitely does not get mentioned often. I feel like everyone knows about Enter the Gungeon, even if they don't love it, but Flint Hook is actually a stellar time. I find it to be very addictive, and I think it merges elements from a bunch of other roguelikes and creates its own unique beast that is very addictive. When you say this is your second favorite game of the genre on Switch, and then the genre happens to be roguelikes, you know it's an amazing game because there's like 3,068 <laughs> roguelikes on eShop. So this being up there in the top two for you, that that definitely says something. I, I didn't play Flint Hook on Switch as much as I would have liked, but I always hope to because it's so pretty to look at and it looks just like so fun. And this looks kind of like the opposite of Enter the Gungeon where like that one is just like so chaotic and this one has a lot going on as well. Oh, this one's chaotic too. Yeah, I, yeah. I know it is, but I don't know, maybe it's it, it's all in my head because I haven't played it as much. It's just like a little less chaotic. It's the right type of chaotic for me. I love that you described the Switch eShop as having like 200% roguelikes. Like yeah. of all the games on the eShop, 200% of them are roguelikes. It's <laughs> That's just, what it feels like, thing. <laughs> now, Flint Hook is great. And again, it's just one of those really good experiences to take on the go. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy. And I'm probably going to play it as soon as this video is over. Let's go way, way back, Gabe to the very early days of the platform. We got a couple from the very early baby stages of Switch. And this one is Graceful Explosion Machine, GEM. It, it's, its acronym is GEM. Of course, it's a GEM. It's simplistic, it's arcadey. I find it to be the, 
ideal evolution of, and, and this could sound damning, but the ideal evolution of a mobile game made perfect for Switch. <laughs> yeah, that, that does sound a little bit damning. My m memories of Gem, it's just that, like, hey, this is like one of the early eShop games that, like, is, I, I'm sure it's on other places now, but at the time I was like, okay, I have to experience this on eShop. It's not available like anywhere else. Like, this is where you have to experience it. And that was like really cool because the game is is fun. It's not necessarily my type of game necessarily. I think like Resogun is a more fun version of this, but the simplistic art style, like the colorful nature of it, you know, like getting those combos up. I was always so jealous of you because you were able to get these like insane like <laughs> combos scores. going. Yeah, like I, I, I just didn't have what it took. Maybe, maybe and maybe, <laughs> Go ahead. maybe mobile game evolution isn't the right term. Maybe it's more just like arcade game evolution. I guess it's because it has that just like short session, very replayable, satisfying in its simplicity, but also in its score. And so maybe that is more of a carryover from the arcade years. Uh, and, and the more just recent analogy would be mobile. But I think it is far more polished than what you'd find on the, the iTunes app store and it controls expertly. Like obviously you have Joy-Con, you don't have a touch screen. Well, you do have a touch screen, but you don't use touch screen. I, I just love this one a lot and looping back and forth to build those combos. Like it again is that very like melodic addictive nature of trying to just manage the chaos and make it your own. I, I find that to be a pattern here. I like a lot of games that have uh, quite a bit of chaos. Yeah, you are a chaotic person. I. I I kind of am. Yep. Okay, you, you know what's very chaotic, or can be very chaotic, or actually is maybe too chaotic at times? I don't know. The next game, Mega Man 11. This is a hardcore side-scrolling platformer that brings absolute mastery to the Blue Bombers franchise. Once again, they have done him so much justice here, and we love the heck out of this on Switch. I know the hardest of core Mega Man fans didn't like the new gameplay like elements like having to like speed up and, and do the power boost like the gear system wasn't for everyone i really appreciate it i thought it was a good way to change up something that has been done a certain way for a very long time the art style was something that took a little getting used to but once i did i really dug it as well the uh, robot masters were not as strong this go around than they have been before but it still provided so much fun playing it i felt like i was a kid again playing through Mega Man like five and six as a kid so yeah the Mega Man 11 definitely did for me that was a big year for Mega Man because we had the uh, x collection come out as well and i know you were really really excited to play through that ice penguin your nemesis i'm sure you fought him a couple more times <laughs> Yeah, Mega Man 11 is really, really cool, and it goes on discount every once in a while, so definitely pick it up when you still can. Yeah, it's very challenging. I mean, people, like, describe Enter the Gungeon as hard, Celeste as hard. For me, like, Mega Man 11 is probably the hardest game I've played on Switch. For me. It's it's not that hard, guys. He, he's just bad at Mega Man. It's okay. Guess. Yeah. Guess. It, it, it's, it's, it honestly is incorporating those new systems that you have to include uh to be successful that i just i forget about or i mismanage but it was definitely not mismanaged as a, a game and as a package it's it's awesome next up is one that i cannot do enough justice i feel like i need to sing this segment gabe to convey to you how majestic this title is overcooked 2 is possibly the perfect co-op game overcooked 1 is amazing overcooked 2 even better and they continue to support it with free dlc it is the ideal girlfriend game it is the ideal like brother sister just co-op but also so competitive because you want to do so well they have enhanced the package as time goes on it's it's brilliant over everyone knows overcooked now i feel like this has become a major part of the games industry from such a humble beginning Humble beginning, really? Like the first one did like so well. I know, but I just mean like it doesn't have like a a great character to to place on the cover. It, it's this interesting concept of like cooking with your friends and making simple recipes. And I feel like it has evolved over the last few years into one of the most recommendable multiplayer titles. And it has become synonymous with 
co-op fun, especially for couples or especially for families. I've told you this, but like I like bump into this game like so randomly. I went to like a bachelor party on this last year and boom, we played Overcooked. Like it was just a thing that was happening. I didn't bring the Switch or anything. It wasn't even my Switch. It was just a thing that was going on. You know, I'll go to cookout sometimes, you know, during the football season, people in Texas like football. I don't know if you know that, Zach. Boom, Overcooked. A few just, of them. Yeah, Overcooked just happens to be being played. Like I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> so, I played Overcooked in Disney lines. I played Overcooked on the couch. I played Overcooked walking around. It is a game that is just it's it's just like perfect for every time. I played it obsessively. I played it in in like spurts. I've gone back to it. Um, one time I did try to play it with four people and that was a disaster. I like it two people. It's very hard to manage more than oh, one no, other dude, person in the four kitchen. People, four people, we, we keep going back to uh, to the word chaotic, right? Four people yeah, it's is insane. super chaotic. It's it, un, if you don't know these impossible. people and you yeah. have a little bit of a stronger personality like I do sometimes, uh, I'm like, I'm sorry I yelled at you, dude. I don't know you, but you should have like chopped the onions quicker. <laughs> it is... Here, I'll say this about Overcooked 2. This is something new that I don't think I've ever said. Oh. It is my favorite game to fail in. Hey, you fail a lot, so... I think it's so fun to restart to like perfect your your plan, perfect your run, and even when you are failing, like sometimes those are the best moments when like it's so close and you just screw it all up and have to go back either to the drawing board or just go back and people get mad at me that I restart all the time because I want it to be perfect. It's it's a, it's a wonderful game. It's a wonderful game. We've got two more on this list and I'm just going to let Gabe uh, take over the mic here because next up is Snipper Clips Cut It Out Together. Oh my god, my favorite early game on Switch. It's no longer my favorite. But I had so much fun with this. I joked a, a, a lot about like playing Snipper Clips with like strangers just to see what it was like. And I actually was able to do it. Not complete strangers, but like people that I didn't really like know. Uh, I took this to the basketball courts a couple times, Zach. And just mm -hmm. like getting people to sit here and be like, well, what the hell is this? Like it's like, it looks like a kid's game. I'm like, yeah, no, but give it a try, give it a try. And then like at the end of it, just like being like so excited when we're able to complete the first like few puzzles and it gets so intricate, it gets so much more difficult as the worlds progress. They eventually uh, added um, other worlds as well with DLC, it's it's super underrated. I know you've kind of like soured on it a little bit as time's gone by because you haven't revisited it. But I think if you play this, I don't know if you've played it with Raven, but if you were to play it with Raven, I think you guys would like legit have a good time. It's it's still like a gamer's game, right? Because I feel like the controls are kind of hard to get used to if you're not super familiar with with, with video games. But it's still right. like simple enough, and yeah, I can sing its praises for days. I, I love everything about sniper clips i hope there's a sequel one day i really do and i don't count the the extra stuff that came out as a sequel <laughs> yeah and this one brings back so many memories even just you me and jake playing it together in the yeah. first day of, of switch being out that was so awesome i don't love it as much as i used to but i do still really appreciate how cute and creative how colorful, how unique, and how needed it was early on for that Switch launch lineup. It was a very important title because it brought something smaller, something really fresh, something really unique and kind of quirky to the system to line up alongside, you know, obviously the great Breath of the Wild. Um, but some of the other titles that may not have been as inspired or as exciting, and this one really caught, I think, everyone by surprise. It was a great project for Nintendo to invest in. Um, and you're right. I hope that they either do a sequel or build upon the idea or just take that concept uh, to some place we can't even imagine yet. It, it's a lot of fun. I did have a ton of fun with it. Um, I don't know why I've soured a little bit, but maybe it's just because of the quality of some of the other titles. But yeah, it, I can't deny that Summer Clips is awesome and, and deserves a spot on this list. Our final game, Gabe, for our 10 is Steam World Dig 2. It is last, but it is definitely not least. And I feel like this game really helped thrust Image and Form into the elite tier of indie developers. Obviously, Steam World Dig 1 and Steam World Heist were awesome packages, but Steam World Dig 2 is incredible. And now we have a situation where the next game, Steam World Quest, people are just so hungry for because they know the caliber of titles that this company is capable of putting out. 
I wish the game were a little bit longer. I wish there were a couple more like boss battles in it. But yeah, you can't deny the greatness of, of SteamWorld Dig 2. When I'm just like left wanting more, that's probably signs that you have a pretty good game on your hands. And yeah, you're right. I'm super excited for quests. I didn't even like, not that I didn't like Image Inform, but I, I didn't love them as much as I do now uh, before Dig 2. That's what did it for me. Like once like I played this, I was like, man, like they really know what's up. Like they're not missing. Like they're swinging and they're knocking these out of the, uh, out of the field constantly. It's home run after home run with them yeah and it's a game that feels so good in your hands it controls so well it's just very natural you don't you don't question like ooh, is this off or ooh, could this be better it's in that way it reminds me of celeste celeste is a, a superior title and celeste does a, a lot uh differently but i just love that you get in and you just play it and you play it and you play it and you play it and then you want to play it more that whole concept of going down and up and cashing in like it's rewarding, it's fun, and I love that the gameplay is super satisfying by itself, but then all of the systems just reinforce what's already great. So it's it's awesome. I'm a little nervous, honestly, about quests, because I think going from... I mean, they've kind of alternated like this, like SteamWorld Dig was, was very action-oriented, and then Heist was a little bit more uh, slow-paced. Dig 2 back on that heavy action platformer uh, mindset, and now Quest going like card turn-based, um, I hope that they're able to still keep it fun and fast and fresh. So we'll have to see if that one can hit our list uh, when we do this again for year three. Yeah, I'm not worried about it at all. I have, I have faith in them. Good. I have faith in the eShop because looking back has proven to me that we've got a lot of great stuff on eShop and we didn't even touch on all of the games that have come from other platforms that are maybe even the best iteration on Switch, and we didn't touch on huge titles like Fortnite or Hollow Knight, uh, Shovel Knight, all the knights, you know, the, that's a separate category, I feel, on eShop. <laughs> um, there's plenty of really great games, like Into the Breach, that we just didn't really experience on Switch, so we wanted to deliver a list that was, hey, the games that we played the most and enjoyed the most on Switch from the eShop over the course of the first two years, and those are the 10 that you heard us just discuss. Let us know which eShop game is your favorite in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Here's to another awesome year of eShop action. Hopefully a bunch of awesome years of eShop action. They definitely will keep the, the quantity of titles coming. Hopefully they keep the quality as well. In the meantime, everybody, have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. For myself and Gabe, Switch Force, out.